Today, I'm going to be programming the world's hardest game, Trap Adventure 2. I mean, if Mr. Beast says it's the hardest thing, yeah, it definitely is. But for the benefit of those that are fortunate enough to have never played or heard of this game, it's basically a platformer where you try to avoid traps. That's it. Also, it is ridiculously hard. No, seriously, whoever made this game needs to be wrapped in a straight jacket and thrown into the deepest cell in the Alcatraz, because I have never wanted to smash my phone so hard while playing a game before. Alright, that's enough shit talking about the game. Let us begin. Get it? Because it's like, let us. That was a dumb joke. Yeah, I know. As usual, we're starting off with square. And since it's a platformer game, we're going to need platforms. Alright, now we need some physics. I could just use a physics engine to save time writing the whole mechanics myself. Or I could save even less time and just steal the physics code I already wrote for Rogue. Was that? You don't know what Rogue is? It's just a little game I'll be working on. Smash like and subscribe if you want to see more. Ah, <sighs> God, I miss Danny. Anyways, we now have the basic structure working. We can add the sprites. As much as I would love to just steal the sprites from the original game online, I've been recently learning pixel art, so I guess it's good practice to just draw it myself. Plus, I need to make some tweaks so I don't get sued by the developers. The first stage is pretty easy. There are no traps, just a straight path that leads to level 1. Nice. To design the levels, we need to find out which objects are animated and which ones are not, so we can hard draw only the static ones and add the rest using code. Level 1. For the first level, everything except the third platform is a static object. The first trap in this level is that there's a spike hidden in the third platform. And that's easy, we can simply create a method in the platforms class that draws a spike image. And since the spike and the platform are in one class, we can create a condition that runs the kill function if the player collides with the top of the object. This is how the kill function works. It runs a simple animation that throws the character back a bit, disables the gravity so it falls off the screen, and lastly resets the game after the animation is done running. When we want to call the function, we pass in the character we want to kill, which in most cases is the player. I honestly don't know why I made it a part of the parameters because we are most likely only going to be killing the player, but I don't know, I guess it doesn't hurt to be extra cautious. The next two parameters is the object itself that's going to kill the player and the side of the object that kills. It could be either of the sides or all of the sides of the object. This part of the code is the one I am most proud of because it definitely made my life moving forward a lot easier. Now what makes the spike trap tricky is it only appears when the player is above the platform. In other words, when the player is about to land on it. So if you're new to the game, you are definitely going to fall for this trap, well at least on the first try. But it's also pretty easy to code. We just need to get the x and y parameters of the platform and check if the player's parameters is past those values, which only happens if the player is above the platform. If the condition is satisfied, we draw the spike. Now you'll think that that's all there is to this trap, but oh boy, you couldn't be more wrong. Apparently if you try to jump the platform and back out halfway through, it falls down instantly killing the player. Oh gosh, it's just the first level and I already have a headache. Alright, a way to do this would be to check if the player collides with the top of the second platform twice. That would be the condition that triggers the third platform to fall on the player. To do that, we can create a boolean that's false by default and becomes true once the player collides with the second platform. Once the boolean becomes true, we can create another boolean that becomes true once the player jumps. Once that one becomes true, we would then need to check if the player has landed, in other words, if the player's y velocity is zero, and if it landed on the second platform, because it's not supposed to fall if the player lands anywhere that's not the second platform, like here or here for example. Once all these conditions are satisfied, that would be the trigger for the third platform to fall down. To do that, we can create a method that simply adds gravity to the platform and decreases its x velocity enough to make it fall directly on the player. This means the only logical escape route is to jump over the third platform to the other side. And we're done. That's the first level. What is it? What do you mean there's more? Alright, my bad, there appears to be one more trap left in this level. So apparently if you stand on this spot for too long, it cuts open a slope and you fall into the spike pit. Now this would have been easy to do if it went for a smaller problem. My tiny 54 lines physics engine sadly has no provisions for slope physics. Even though I could just go ahead and use a standard one that does have it, it's probably not worth the trouble for an animation that's barely half a second, which means the best option would probably be just to improvise. First we can start by cutting a slope in the levels image, add a dummy platform to cover it using code, then I check if the player is on top of the platform, set the timeout to 1 second, and if the player is still on top of it, we remove the platform so it falls down and slightly decrease the player's x velocity so it looks like it's actually sliding down the slope. Level two. For level 2, everything except this platform is a static object. For the second level, nothing crazy happens once you land on the second platform. Once you're there, the first platform moves in a rotating fashion to the other side, kind of giving you an extra step to give you the ability to advance to the other side. At least that's what it wants you to think, because the moment you try to jump, it just moves away making you fall to the spike and die. <laughs> Sorry, I just find it hilarious. So a couple of things to notice that the platform isn't exactly moving from point A to point B. It's rotating with its origin being somewhere around here, making it move in that direction. Now the hard part isn't the rotation. You can just use the canvas built-in rotate function, set the origins to be around that position, and then just decrease the angle. Basic stuff. Now the issue is, the way the physics works is it doesn't really apply to the platform image itself. Meaning it doesn't say, oh, the platform is here, we'll put the physics there. It's more like, oh, this is x and y position, this is width and height, and then uses that information to create like an invisible force at 
with that spot. Hopefully that made sense. So even though the platform appears to be here, because all we did was a rotation, the physics still remains at the previous position. So how do we solve this problem? A simple workaround would be to remove the physics from the platform entirely once the player gets to the second platform and then draw new platforms on either side depending on where exactly the platform rotates to. So the moment it rotates towards the right, you create a platform at that position. If it rotates to the other side, we remove the one at the right and create a new one at the left. This solution works perfectly, however, there's a small problem. Because the platform moves away when the player jumps and the other side being too far for the player to jump across, the only way to advance to the other side is to fall down just enough to reach the moving platform so you can then jump across to the other side. The problem is ours is just a rotation, so the movement carries no physics, making it pretty much impossible to do this. At this point, I was screwed, because I honestly felt there was no way I could get around this problem. And then I noticed something. Due to how fast the platform rotates, there's pretty much only one exact spot the player can reach it at. So what I can do, I could just create an invisible platform at that exact spot, creating the illusion that the player is jumping from the rotating platform. Problem solved. Now the final obstacle on this level is, wait for it, a wall with spikes. Once you succeed in advancing to the other side, if you move a little further, a wall with spikes appears blocking your path to the exit. After about 2 seconds, the wall collapses down attempting to kill the player. The only way to dodge this is to jump slightly away and then back to land at the back of the wall. But that's not all. If you wait longer than a second on the platform, it rotates 90 degrees falling you off the wall and instantly killing you. There is nothing anyone can tell me to convince me otherwise that the maker of this game isn't a psychopath. Alright, so we start by drawing the wall of spikes, then drawing it on the screen. We then increase its exposition enough to make it hidden from the player. We then add an invisible platform somewhere around here and add a condition to check if the player is on top of that platform. If it is, we reveal the wall of spikes. We then add a timeout of 1 second and if the player is still on the platform, we fall the wall and kill the player. If the wall has fallen and the player survives, in other words, isn't dead, we add another timeout of about 2 seconds and if the player is still on the wall, we flip it and push the player's exposition back thus killing the player and we are done of course this game has way more levels each one more ridiculous than the next but i think we're just going to stop here or else this video is going to take ages to complete i think coding the first two levels is good enough for content if this video does well enough i'll probably make a part two where we would code more levels and stuff i would most likely have to use an actual physics engine by then or at least upgrade mine because the one we have currently is way too limited and we'll just make the job a lot harder so yeah in the meantime we have to give my version of the game its own name any ideas tap adventure more like Dumb adventure. Thanks Felix, dumb adventure it is. Subscribe.